Well, good morning, men. Welcome to Man in the Mirror Men's Bible Study. We're in the series, Men Reaching Men. If you would, open in your Bibles to Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And we have uh, five area directors in town for boot camp, which is our final training before they go active. And I'd just like to ask you area directors to please stand and uh, remain standing. And so over here is Pete Lepresto from New York. And, and by the way, area directors, I'm going to ask you uh, when I introduce you to look back at the camera. And uh, we're going to not only introduce you to the men here, but also to the men online and to the rest of the world. So uh, Pete uh, Lepresto is from New York. His uh, territory is basically from Elmira to Rochester, just west of Watkins Glen, where I have the distinction of having uh, had a crash during practice at the top of the Rising S's. And uh, so then uh, Wayne Morgret uh, from uh, Akron and Cincinnati. Cincinnati, Akron is his territory. And, uh, and then Mike Flynn, if you'd look at the camera over there, Mike, uh, right over there. Yep. And so Mike is from Peoria, Illinois. And uh, then Jim Bocher right here is from Northern California, uh, just north of Sacramento, all the way up to the, uh, to the, the, to the state line. And then uh, Mike Keller is from uh, Tallahassee. And so, first of all, I wonder if you would join me in welcoming these area directors to Orlando for their training. <laughs> and uh, you may be seated. And then for those of you men uh, online, so just trying to give you a, a more visual image of uh, what's, what's happening here. And so if one of these men uh, is in your territory, please be sure to connect with them. And then we uh, want to do a shout out today. This is a really cool shout out. A Dangerous Men for the Lord. That's the name of the group. I love this. Uh, from Lee's Summit Community Church in uh, Lee's Summit, uh, Missouri. Uh, there are eight men from eight different churches getting together uh, at a park on Thursdays at 7 a.m. Their leader is Bill Reagan, and uh, just a reminder, we're looking for field staff in Lee Summit. So I wonder if you'd join me in giving a rousing and a warm man in the mirror welcome to these men, these dangerous men here for the Lord. <laughs> One, two, three, hoorah. Great. Glad to have you men with us. So the series is Men uh, Reaching Men. The very long first big idea was that discipleship is one man caring enough about another man to help him build three things. What are they? Number one is a relationship with God. Number two is a worldview that's biblical. And number three is a lifestyle worthy of our Lord and Savior Jesus. And so, um, the goal of this series is to, and first of all, I want to give a nod to all of the men who already know all these things and are already doing all of these things. And of course, this is a reminder, and reminders are, are good, and the encouragement that comes from seeing other brothers doing the same thing. But the goal of this series is to give you the training, the tools, and the confidence so that you can do those things, that you can care enough about one other man to, to, to help him have either a relationship with God and or a worldview that's biblical and or a lifestyle worthy of Christ. That's what we're trying to uh, accomplish here. And so that first week, um, we talked about how one cup of coffee could change the world. And most of you uh, raise your hands that you would like to start engaging a man uh, by having a cup of coffee. And we used cup of coffee as a metaphor. It's just, you know, it could be, it could be anything. So a couple of very interesting stories came in, emails came in from uh, guys, which I apparently have left at home, which is fine. But I'll tell you what they, they said. So uh, one man said that he did not raise his hand that week. He did not raise his hand because he was afraid that he wouldn't follow through, wouldn't have time, wouldn't get it done, and, and he, he didn't want to make a commitment between himself and the Lord to do that. But, he, as he said, God had other plans. And so he, uh, the Lord brought a, a man 
to mind that he works with. And so he, uh, he approached them about getting together. They did. And as it turns out, they both have uh, blended families, and they both have, uh, well, uh, our, our man has a wife who's a teacher, and then apparently this, this man has a girlfriend who is also a teacher. So he found that they had quite a bit in common. And so, he, as it turned out, because our man is a little further down life's path and has more experience in uh, fatherhood and, and marriage and so forth, he was able to uh, be of enough benefit that this man has asked him, could we meet again in two weeks? Now, is that a great story? That's a great story. Uh, another one of our men uh, didn't have coffee, but uh, because he said it's 7 p.m. at night, it's a little late for coffee. But after one of his uh, uh, Bible studies, he invited uh, two of the men out to his truck for a tailgate talk. And these two men, two young men, um, are, are both wrestling with whether or not to believe in Christianity or Islam. They're trying to make that decision. And so he was able to, to get, instead of, you know, in a group context where you really don't have the opportunity to get personal now, you can get pretty personal if, it, if it's a small group, but here's, there's an inverse relationship. You know, the smaller the group, the deeper you can go. And so, with the two of them, he was able to be of great assistance to them. Hey, he had such a good experience, he said he's going to start making Wednesday night tailgate talk night. Isn't that great? So, these, this is just awesome, these stories that are taking place. And so, what I want to, us to do, it's going to be a seven-week series, and this is the fourth, so in uh, three weeks' time, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to have an open mic on Friday morning. There'll be no message per se. Well, there'll be many messages, I should say, but you'll be giving them. And so what I want you to be doing is to, to be thinking about taking uh, one to two minutes just so you can benchmark John Anderson's video from last week uh, or two weeks ago or whenever it was, last week. Uh, that was about a minute and a half. The story I just told about the, um, the uh, young men trying to choose between Islam and Christianity, uh, that's a minute or less. The other story, about a minute and 15 seconds. So that can kind of give you an idea. You know, keep them short. But some of you may just not want to get up here and behind a microphone and tell your story, look into the eyeballs of all these people. So... In the meantime, after each of the messages for this week, next week, and the, uh, yeah, this week, this is the fourth week, this week, next week, and the following week, the next three weeks, what we're going to do is, is we're going to uh, have Michael Lenahan, our videographer, uh, to uh, set up out in the hallway here, and you can go out and record your story, what happened when you had a cup of coffee? What happened when you took uh, a guy to a ball game? What happened when you helped a guy set up for a garage sale? What happened when you gave a guy a book? What happened when you invited a man to the Bible study? Whatever it is that, that you have uh, done to, to reach out with an intentional spiritual friendship to man. Isn't that a great idea? Huh? All right, so just out of curiosity, how many of you guys think you will want to be participating in that on, uh, on the seventh week. Raise your hands. That's not a commitment, but just raise your hands. Let me give me an idea. Okay, so now I have the task of trying to persuade many more of you to do it. <laughs> so maybe it wasn't such a good idea. <laughs> I thought it was a great idea, and I hope you will too, and I hope you'll take advantage of this and tell your stories. Okay, so then... Um, Last week, we took a, ha a hand count and found that uh, 57 men so far had, had the cup of coffee or done the equivalent. Then, uh, you know, Brett uh, came and talked to us about this idea of intentional spiritual friendships, building intentional spiritual uh, friendships. And he told the great story about inviting a coworker. Uh, to uh, give him a ride home because his car was, 
in the shop. And so for two weeks, he did that. But by doing that every day, they had enough, enough of these contacts. So eventually, the man began to open up. And Brett talked about them sitting in the driveway and the man sobbing as he was telling his story, something, of course, he wouldn't have done uh, unless there had been uh, this intentional spiritual friendship to develop. And, and Brett told us we could uh, pray for a man, we, more ideas, we could serve a man, or we could give a man a book. We gave uh, you the opportunity to, to take a book. A hundred of you, more than a hundred books went out of here that morning. And so far, last week, uh, 27 our 26 men approximately had uh, said that they had already had the opportunity to give that book away. Now, just a time out. <clears throat> God is not on our seven-week time clock. He's on his own time clock, all right, you see? And so this is not something that we orchestrate, that we manufacture, that we make happen each week. This is something that, that God is doing. So God may be equipping, training, tooling, giving you the confidence in this seven-week series for some guy that you're going to meet a year from now, you see. Or it may be for a guy you met a year ago and you're still trying to figure out, what do I do with this guy? So just remember, we're not on a, we're not on a timetable here, but... But what we want to do is we want to give you, again, the training, the tools, and the confidence so you can care enough about one other guy to help him become what God wants him to become. Okay? So, and then David came and he talked about a little bit about managing expectations. And why do we have to worry about managing expectations? Well, there's an extra element in this. We are engaged in a spiritual enterprise, and therefore we also have a spiritual warfare. We have an additional layer of opposition when we're trying to uh, connect with men. So the idea of just managing expectations. And then David came up with a wonderful illustration about, about uh, being a fireman. And a fireman is rushing into the building to save people who are in danger. Uh, firemen are not standing outside the building. Oh, please come out. Or, or I, as soon as they come out, then I'll help them. No, he said, we're to, to go. And so that brings us then uh, to today. And so uh, we, uh, I, what I want us to do today is just show you how you can help a man get across the finish line. All right? So uh, we've been talking about uh, all of these things. And today I want us to, to focus on this uh, concept of the ministry of, of giving a nudge. The ministry of giving a nudge. Uh, and uh, in this area of intentional spiritual relationships, I mean, this is the first step, uh, building this friendship, this intentional spiritual friendship. Acts chapter 1, verse 8 uh, it says that when the, uh, the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power and you will be my witnesses. In uh, basically here, there, and everywhere, Judea, Samaria, you know, in outermost parts of the world. Well, here, there, and everywhere. And so uh, instead of exegeting that passage, I just simply want to say to you that, that this is the mission that Jesus uh, one way of articulating the mission that Jesus has for us is, and, 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 and this power, whose power is this? So, is, is, is this like, you know, you work your muscles and therefore you have a bigger muscle and so forth, therefore you're stronger and you have more power? Absolutely not. This is not this is not God making you powerful. This is God giving the power that he has to work through you to be a vessel. That's one of my prayers every day. Uh, Father, I come to meet with you. Jesus, I come to meet you. Holy Spirit, I come to meet with you. You're much loved vessel. We're, we're vessels. We're to be vessels through whom the power, the dunamis, the dynamite of God can flow. Second Corinthians 12, 9, Jesus says, when Paul's pleading about taking away his thorn in the flesh, uh, he says, Jesus says, said, Paul, 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 it's not going to happen. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. 
And Paul goes on and says, therefore, I will be content in weaknesses, insults, hardships, difficulties, persecutions. For when I am weak, then I will, I am strong. So therefore, I will boast about my weaknesses. You feel weak? You feel timid? You don't want to do this? Great! Great! That means that God's power can flow through you. you know, the worst thing you can do, do is have, have so much confidence you walk into one of these situations, you think you know exactly what you need to do and how to fix the guy. Don't go there. Go to the Holy Spirit. Trust your weakness. Present yourself. Let the power of the Holy Spirit work in and through you. And then if you would just turn to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. This is the f- famous text that apologists use. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord is holy. Watch this. Always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. And so by now I hope you're starting to get a a different kind of a picture, uh, a different kind of perspective, a fresh perspective about how we can go about reaching other men. It's basically about doing the same things we're going to be doing all day, every day anyway, but with a view that along the way we're going to make some intentional spiritual friendships with men. Very simple paradigm, but a a shift from the paradigm of getting men into structured groups, which are not bad, but getting, simply getting men into structured groups and then filling them with all the right information. Just thinking if we bombard them with enough information, then, then they're going to be okay. As I said in the, in the first message, if that would work, it would have already worked. Everybody would be a disciple because we have bombarded with everybody already. So there's something else that, that needs to take place. It's this idea of doing it in, in relationships. So first thing up then is, uh, you know, um, uh, and we do this, why? Because you desperately want to help men have what men desperately want, meaning and purpose in their lives. We know that that's found in a relationship with Jesus and relationships with other men as well. So, uh, you know, how do we do all this? The first thing we do is we just be a friend. We just intentionally be a spiritual friend to these men. So uh, I raised my hand also uh, on that first week. And so I uh, have had a few experiences, but one, uh, a couple days after that, I was at the gym, and a man that I have been just talking to uh, for about a year, kind of listening to his colorful vocabulary. Um, I looked a little down. So I said, hey, what's up? And so he had given his heart to a woman. And this woman had broken up with him. And she had kept one of his cars and turned out that she's done this to a number of other men as well. And in fact, He had to sue her, is suing her, to get back his vehicle, uh, which is in his name, but he's having to sue to get the vehicle back from her. And so he found out that that when her lawyer, uh, so, uh, but uh, told him that when she uh, went to pay her legal fee to defend against this suit, Three men came to the law office to pay her legal fees claiming to be her boyfriend. And now, yesterday, I saw him again yesterday, and, uh, uh, and, and I gave him a copy of a, of a book yesterday. So I just listened. It was his friend. I had my cup of coffee. It wasn't a cup of coffee. It was just, you know, it was in the gym. 
Uh, but in between sets, is just listen to him, uh, you know, three or four times, you know, during the course of an hour. And then yesterday I was with him again. I gave him a book, and he, he told me that uh, she's already posted on Facebook that she's in another relationship, and he's just devastated by this. Well, he gave his heart to her, right? And so this is why we teach our children, don't give your heart to another person, because if you give your heart to another person, you break up. It is the same emotional reaction as a divorce. So he's going through a divorce, even though he, she, she was just a girlfriend. And I think he also is a little ticked off just how betrayed uh, this uh, I called her a gray widow. Is that a real term? You know, not a black widow, because he didn't kill him. She didn't kill him, but you know, like a gray widow. She's like a gray widow or something. So, um, you know, that's, that's, that's how we do it. Men are especially open to these conversations when they are in what? Crisis, pain, trouble. All right. Uh, Let's move on. Let me give you the big idea for the day. You can see it with these different stories that have already been told. Just help a man go as far as he wants to go toward Jesus at that moment. Just help a man go as however far he wants to go toward Jesus at that particular moment. And if you, if you get pushed back, and by the way, if you don't get pushed back ever, then that means you're probably not pushing far enough. But as soon as you sense the resistance, back away. You've gone as far as you can go at that particular moment. Um, that is the, that is the uh, it's not a uh, curse, but it's the dilemma. It's the dilemma of the evangelist that uh, you, you will never know if you have pushed too far until you've actually done it, you see. But at that moment, then just back away and everything should be fine. Now, the next thing I want to do is I, I, I want to, uh, you know, so that's how you give a nudge. You know, you just take a man as far as he wants to go at that particular moment. That's giving him a nudge. Now, uh, now what do we do? You, we have a man who we've built this friendship with, he's, and he's ready to go. He's ready to go. So <clears throat> how can you help him get across the finish line? If you would, take a look at this personal testimony worksheet. It's called, How to Prepare a Three-Minute Elevator Testimony. I'd like to have everybody get one of these in your hands. Hey, by the way, by the way, we should do another, another hand count. So, how many of you have so far been able to engage a man in any of these different ways that we've been talking about so far? If you would, just, just raise your hands. If you've been able to engage a man in any way like we've been talking about. Okay, this is awesome. Table leaders, uh, would you get a count and, uh, and then somebody, Jim? Jim, maybe you could go around and, and pick these up. Uh, okay, raise your hands. Raise your hands. Leave them up. Leave them up. Table leaders, do a quick count. Do a quick count. Write your, write your count on a sheet of paper. Uh, tell Jim. Jim, why don't you go around and get it, and then, and then we'll announce that. All right, here's the, here's the worksheet. And so the, the first thing you need to be able to know to help a man get across the finish line is how to tell him your story. Okay, three things usually happen when a man comes to faith in Jesus. First, he sees the life of Christ exampled in a man who shows a personal interest in him. That's spiritual friendships. Second, he hears that man's personal faith story or testimony. This is a worksheet on how to put that together. And so instead of having a separate set of questions this week, your three questions are before, how, and after. What I want you table leaders to do, if you will, is to just spend a little time on each of these these. Uh, sections, and uh, ask these questions and just get that lubricated and so forth, be because I'm going to encourage you, and many of you have already done this, and, and I'm hoping many more of you will do this, is to sit down maybe tomorrow morning on a Saturday morning or just sometime uh, when you have a, a chance to, to maybe take an hour or two, I'd suggest a couple hours, and literally write this out so you will, as it says in 1 Peter 3.15, be prepared to give a reason for the hope that is in you. You see how this works? So uh, 
uh, a three-minute testimony. It's about 150 words on what your life was like before Christ. What was your life like, uh, life like before Christ? Empty, confused, lonely, disillusioned, futile, lacking significance, without purpose or meaning, successful but still not happy. As much as possible, relate your story to what you know about his story. And by the way, try to come up with uh, an actual practical example, not just concepts, but al also a, a, a story that gives an illustration of that. 100, 150 words. That's about the normal talking rate for a minute. And then 150 words on how you came to Christ. And then uh, what has happened since, after you came to Christ? Uh, what has Christ done in your life since then? Pick areas that have changed which relate to his struggles, if you can do that. And then also, uh, again, maybe give, a, give an illustration, give a story. And so here's the challenge down at the bottom. If you want to get serious about sharing Christ with men, or even if you already are, don't shoot from the hip, okay? Take a couple of hours, write out time practice, memorize your three-minute elevator speech testimony, pick words that sparkle and emote. So here's the big idea. So... We're just trying to help a man go as far as he wants to go toward Jesus at that moment. And, uh, and so when he's ready to, 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 to start moving across the finish line or, or, or score a touchdown, however you want to say it, uh, we need to be able to help him do that. One way we do that is by telling our faith story, and then the other way is by being able to show him how he can put his faith in Jesus too. Now, this is where it gets tricky, right? So if you would, on your tables... There are these Becoming a Man Alive booklets. Everybody, if you would, get one of these booklets. Uh, uh, and then these are $5 a piece. But today, for you, it's going to be a gift. Actually, they're not $5. I don't even know if we... How much are they? A dollar, two dollars, three dollars, something. Uh, a, a, a gift for each of you this morning. I encourage you to read it. But here's the main thing. So you may not... You may, but you may not be able to sit down with a man and actually explain the gospel to him. So this is a track. Uh, it's like, it's, 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 you know, the four spiritual laws is a track. This is a track. And so um, somewhere in here is a prayer which you can't see defined uh, right now on uh, page, yeah, on page 42. Turn to page 42, and let's just read this together. It says this, Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for wanting me to experience the Father's love and acceptance. By the way, some of you might want to pray this as, a, as an, a, an affirmation or a reaffirmation of your faith, even as we're doing it now. Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for wanting me to experience the Father's love and acceptance. Thank you that I am valuable just the way I am. Thank you for loving me so much that you sacrificed your life for my sins. By faith, I receive you into my life as Savior and Lord. Thank you for forgiving my sins, for which I am truly sorry. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. Thank you for making me alive in you. Let me find rest for my soul. Change me into the man you created me to be. Amen. And so you could either... Uh, after you've given your testimony and talked about the gospel, if, if you're able to do that, you could, you could open to this page and uh, read that prayer out loud and then just ask the man, does this prayer express you know, the desire of your heart and where you are today? And if he says yes, he said, well, if you'd like to, why don't we just pray this together out loud and you can receive Jesus into your life right now. Uh, uh, so why don't I maybe read it out loud a phrase at a time and you repeat after me. Would that feel comfortable to you? Yes, that would. All right, so Lord Jesus, I need you. And then he says, Lord Jesus, I need you. And you read through the prayer. And then you would be helping a man enter into his eternal destiny to live with God forever. Or you can just give it to him say, here, read this because I'm a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Or I don't have enough experience yet to feel confident helping you become the Christian that I know you want to be. But if you'll just read this booklet, it'll tell you, it'll tell you everything you need to know and how to do it. Okay? So, <clears throat> a 
Also on your tables, final resource, third resource for the day, if everybody could get one of these Reach 3 cards. This is another way you can build intentional spiritual friendships. So uh, it's the th Reach 3 challenge, and the idea is very, very simple, very simple. Write down the names of three men that you uh, are not sure whether or not they're believers, and, uh, but that you uh, are drawn to. It could be family members, neighbors, coworkers, whatever. Write down the three names, and then just simply uh, make the commitment to begin praying for those guys. And it's so interesting, you know, when you, do, when you do pray for anything over and over and over again, it's more and more and more on your mind, and then all these other things that we're talking about uh, can be released, uh, you know, more effectively. So, <clears throat> those are the three resources, and I'm just so, I'm just so glad. The big idea here, you know, just help a man go as far as he wants to go toward Jesus at that moment. I'm just so glad for the, the, uh, the five men, plus my praying wife, that did this for me. I, I, I can't imagine, well, actually, I can't imagine where I would be because I have a family member who's where I would be uh, if those five men had not come in, into my life. And I remember the, the preacher was one of them, and he just... He just he wasn't eloquent, but he, he understood the gospel. And he would just simply present the gospel. <clears throat> His name was Hugh Lake. And then it was a Methodist church here in town. And then H.O. and Bob, they, 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 they're, the, they're the ones that took me for the cup of coffee. And they began to just ask me questions and get to know me. And then... Dan, we ended up in a Sunday school class, and that was the first time I had ever experienced uh, a conviction of sin. Felt sorry, really, for anything I'd ever done. But it all came at once, let me tell you. <laughs> Boy, was that a day. And then, and then Jim, who, uh, after I received Jesus, invited Patsy and me to become part of their couple's Bible study. And Jim, he saw something in me that I, had, I didn't know was there. And he spoke words of encouragement and gave me a vision for my life, a vision for biblical manhood. It just kind of unchained something inside me. And I've never been the same. And there are thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions and hundreds of millions of men in this world who are longing right now are desperate, whether they can articulate it or not, for a man to care enough about them to just help him go as far as he wants to go towards Jesus. We are those men. We are those men. Jim, do you have a number? 32 hands. Well, well, that's less than we had last week. That doesn't work at all for me. Is it 32 additional? How many of you have done anything at all in, this, in, in, in reaching out to another guy? Raise your hand. Raise them up, and I'm going to just go around and count on myself because I don't trust Jim anymore. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. I do trust you. 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49? Is it up or not? 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 3, 4, 65, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, Ah, touchdown, 76 guys. Did I miss anybody? 76 men. This is awesome. Can you imagine how happy the wives and the children of those men are going to be for decades to come? Let's pray in Jesus' name. Our Father, our dearest Father, thank you. Thank you so much for what you're doing. 
right here. And we know it's happening online, so we know it's happening all across the country, even the world, that, that there are all of these new spiritual, intentional friendships that are being developed. Oh, Father, we pray that you would bring a harvest. Let it be harvest time. We ask this in your loving name, Jesus. Amen.